Welcome to Brave with Lisa YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Bruton and my goal is to inspire you to live bravely in that unique rhythm of grace that God has designed just for you. On this channel, we are going to be hearing from amazing people from all different walks of life who are bravely walking in that unique rhythm of grace and calling that God has designed just for them. I know that as we hear their stories, we are going to learn a lot. We're going to find keys that are going to help us to also walk bravely in that unique rhythm of grace and that unique calling that God has just for you and for me. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Brave with Lisa podcast. Uh, today, I get to hang out with the amazing Matt Beckenham, who is a pastor in Sydney. Um, I've actually only known Matt for about a month, but he has already significantly impacted um, my world and my life. And so I'm really excited to learn more about Matt, his story, and just glean wisdom from him today. So welcome, Matt. Thanks, Lisa. So good to be able to meet you, and this, I'm really looking forward to this as well. Oh, well, I want to, um, let's just start with getting to know you a little bit. Can you tell us a bit about your world at the moment? Sure. So, yes, from Sydney, Australia. I've actually been born, raised in Sydney, um, married my wife Trish back in 1990. Uh, she's a Texan, and uh, she came over and did some mission work with the church that I was youth leading at the time, and we got on really well. And uh, so well that we decided to get married. Um, yeah, and so 31 years later, we've got three adult children as well. Uh, and again, just love them uh, to bits. Uh, but yeah, I run uh, a Baptist church in Sydney, Australia. And I'm just starting a new business called Greater Things as well, which is all about helping people discover the Father's heart. Uh, the freedom that comes from that, the identity, the authority that flows from that, and just the the concept of the fullness of life that comes from understanding who you are. So yeah, I really love helping and walking with people, mentoring people. It's just such, it's just my heart. Oh, I'm really excited about your new business. Um, that is something that has stood out uh, to me about you is that you carry the father's heart and you have this incredible revelation about love and really walk in it can you share your story on how you came to that and just the lessons you learned from it yeah absolutely see love is something that I think is definitive for all believers I think when God is declared to be love um, like is recorded in scripture I think that's my starting point and I think every believer is, every person, not just believer, but every person is made to love and be loved. Mm. And um, it's such a, a beautiful thing when you start seeing that actually flow in relationships, uh, in families, in communities. Now, see, for me, um, where this great revelation of love flow from, which strangely enough came from uh, halfway through our marriage, we were, had a bit of a disaster and crisis sort of moment I guess you call it and uh, for Trish and I it was this moment of okay what are we doing here uh, I was a workaholic uh, and just spent so much time firstly in the engineering world but then secondly in the pastoring world and it just drew me away and outside of relationship particularly with, with Trish and my family uh, to the point where I, I effectively broke down and that was about 14 years ago uh, inside of that moment, though, I met grace personified, if I can use that word, in a, a very real way through a bunch of people who wanted to love love me, not based on what I'd done wrong, but who I am. Uh, and so in the midst of putting your life back together again from marriage failure to, to marriage healing, um, there are a lot of voices inside of your mind that will drive you away from those places uh, and into places of hurt and desolation. What I found is, yes, those voices were there and sometimes they were my own voice. But I discovered that in the voice of Trish, um, phrases like I forgive you were powerful mm -hmm. phrases. They were healing phrases. Um, I think forgiveness is supernatural. Uh, it's a supernatural power. And I think when it's offered... Uh, and that place of relationship is opened, it's just extraordinary. Uh, and then I had other people who would walk beside me to say, I can help you. And you know, when you feel beyond uh, help and you feel beyond uh, and you feel so uh, such a failure, 
it's in these moments when people care because because there's no other reason they just do and so the father started selling into me this concept of his love that changes lives his love that drives away fear his love that overcomes sin and again it didn't dismiss or minimize the actions that i'd done wrong but it allowed me into an understanding of his revelation and his love and when jesus declared forgiveness he didn't declare it as words he declared it as relationship and so uh, the apostle peter denies him or betrays him and jesus welcomes him back into relationship by saying do you love me and i really resonate with that that passage in john 21 because he said to peter do you love me three times and i felt that myself and it's part of that restorative place what jesus was leading me into lisa where he was saying do you love me and i'm like yeah i do and he goes no no do you do you love me and even as i'm saying it now all these years later i still get quite emotional about it because again by the third time you get to this place of just going right this guy is actually wanting a relationship with me and he does not want to have that relationship with the dysfunction that i've brought into it he's actually saying to me i'm willing to love you past the dysfunction i'm willing to love you past the poor choices i'm willing to love you past the sin i'm willing to love you past all of that into the place of identity mm. and so now when i sit with people I want to do the same for them. And so even when the first time I met you, Lisa, it's just like, okay, who is the human that is sitting here in front of me? Um, when I meet, meet other people in lives, I want to be able to engage with them at a heart level where they can see and feel and know the Father's love is tangible uh, and it's, it's transferable. Um, and it's, it's life-changing when you feel that kind of love and so I see this sort of love uh, pop up all over the place. And at times I think it, we are either too busy or we pass by or it's somebody else's story. No, this whole thing of love is our story because his story is also our story. His story uh, invites our story into it. And the one who is love wants to transform and redeem us by that very love. Does that answer your question? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... Matt, when you came to this place of like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm at a place of breakdown and really taking stock, did it take being honest with yourself and honest with the people around you to start the process of healing? Yeah. See, for me, there's a, the great down, one of the great downfalls was fear of failure. Mm. When with the fear of failure for me, it could be different for others, but for me, I had to pretend that everything was okay and I could do the things that I do really well so people wouldn't actually ask for what's actually really going in my life. Mm -hmm. And so if I was, um, like if I was playing my guitar really well or if I was singing or if I was preaching at church or I was doing these things really well, everyone thinks that your life is going along. Mm. Okay. And the person that you're lying to initially is yourself, but you're also lying to other people because they're actually wanting to do relationship, mm. but I'm wanting to do facade. Mm -hmm. And so this fear of failure became so big in my life that everything that I was doing wrong, I was hiding. Wow. And everything that you keep secret is something that you have to keep secret, that you have to then protect. Uh, and it got to the point where, like even my counsellor, she said, can you think about having a bathtub with all the ping pong balls in it? Mm -hmm. She said, you could probably keep under the surface about five or six of those at any given time. She said, but Matt, you've probably got a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, a thousand? She goes, maybe two. <laughs> and it's just like... <laughs> You can't keep all of this under the surface. Mm. And so there was this great moment in the metaphoric moment of going, right, all, they all came to the surface. In the reality, it's like I'm about to be judged in a really large way. And many people did. I did myself. Um, the, one of the guys who came and stood beside me through that time is such a good friend of mine. Uh, he said to me, Matt, um, yeah, you have been judged. Mm. But the one who has judged you, has judged you as a son, mm. not as a sinner. It took my breath away, Lisa. Yeah, I bet. Again, it's something that still holds so dear to my spirit that he sees me not through a lens of sin or a failure. He sees me through the lens 
that he created me as. And again, how did he create me? In his very image. Wow. And I think for me, this is what I want to do with each person that I come in contact with or or I meet. I want to see them as they have been created by the King of Kings in his very image. I have this concept that we have been, uh, tr- we are transforming from glory to glory, as the Apostle Paul says. So you've got to understand your start point. Yeah. Start in glory. You don't start in the depths of sin and depravity. You start in glory. And yet sin can actually mess with relationships. And it does. Mm-hmm. It does. Um, say if I lied to you and you found out it would mess with our relationship. Um, however, if I speak truth to you and you start relying on that truth, it blesses the relationship. I think it's the same with our heavenly dad. He just sees every single time that we lie. Yeah, that's so true. I I just think he just shakes his head and going, oh man, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) That that sort of stuff. So, um, so once you were honest with yourself and the people around you and really, obviously you had different reactions. Some were filled with love and grace and others had judgment. How long did it take to start to change habits and walk in the freedom that you're now in? Some of those things were nearly instantaneous because to come from a life of hiding into a life mm-hmm. of freedom I, I cannot tell you the breaking of the yoke that was upon me from the lies that I had to keep. To live a life in freedom and truth, um, some of those were nearly instantaneous of just oh. going, right, I don't have to hide anymore. Yeah. What had to be rebuilt were um, relationships, mm-hmm. trust. Um, habits needed to be formed that weren't based upon, upon me hiding mm-hmm. um, but were actually helpful inside of family, inside of marriage, inside of rel- relationships with other people. Uh, and for some of those people I'd hurt and, uh, again, for some it took a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some, some it took me a while just to get a new pattern or a new flow. So you know how Paul says you've got to renew the thoughts of your mind, don't follow yes. the patterns and customs of the world. Um, there are still times to this day where the fear of failure says, hey, remember me? Um, <laughs> you can hide that if you want to. And, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. Um, but it's so these years later, I've also got people in my life that love me well enough to see beneath the surface. Yeah. And so my healing has been one, yeah, I've got to step into it and I've got to own it. But two, the father draws people around you that are willing to love you well enough to say, hey, Matt, there's something else here that's going, can, can we talk about it? Now, I can choose to hide it at that point in time if mm-hmm. I want to. That's what I would have done in the past. Or I can cho- choose to engage with the love that's been so freely given to me. And so for me, over the last, um, I think it's been 13 or 14 years, I've seen relationships grow in strength. I've seen um, accountability come into my life that it has never been there. I, I see restoration flowing even into the lives and hearts of some that I caused so much difficulty to all those years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, there's still a journey that's to be had. But I tell you, it's just if you're up for the conversation, I want to walk with you in it. Mm. Uh, like I've seen many people go through what I go through and they say it's too hard. And, and the phrase that I use for myself, it's not that it we say it's too hard, but what we're actually saying, it's not easy enough. Yeah. I often find people want to take shortcuts out of the yeah. dark valley rather than walk through the dark valley. And I always tell people that the feast table is at the end of the dark valley, like in Psalm 23, so walk with. And in that valley, David found that the father stood beside him. Mm-hmm. I found that too. I found that in the expression of the Holy Spirit. I found that in the expression of people. Uh, and so in finding it in, in the God's voice in people is discovering a love that I've heard about but now believe in. Wow, that's amazing. And so having those, it sounds like having those conversations with, um, that are full of truth and love have been really transformative for you. Yeah. Well, I guess in the Bible it says you've got to tell the truth with love. And if anyone ever does that for you, uh, if anyone has to say that, Lisa, it's usually they're about to take love off the table and hit you in the head really hard with something you've done wrong. Um, I often say to people, if you've got to justify our conversation by telling me that this is love, I'm not sure that you're actually qualified to have the conversation Mm -hmm. with me. Uh, 
So I want to sit with people who don't know need to say to me, I'm telling you the truth and it's in love. I want to sit with people who love me well enough to say, can we just talk about why that actually happened mm -hmm. there? I think this is for me an outworking of healthy relationship, healthy boundaries. Um, and it just shows to me the willingness that people have to partner with us in relationship and to walk through those difficult conversations. See, Lisa, I don't think we do difficult conversations very well in our culture. Oh, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we unfriend people as quick in life as we do on some of our social media platforms, mm -hmm. um, where I think there are such rich conversations that can be clunky yeah. and can be hard, but they are worthwhile. Yeah, that's refreshing to hear because there is that... Um, there is that concept, like you said, just to unfriend them and just get them out of your life and move on. Um, and I heard somewhere, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was Bill Johnson. He was just saying he actually treasures those clunky relationships or those ones that are uncomfortable because it helps um, shape him and it brings to light things that um, he doesn't want to see and gets to deal with it. So yeah, is that what you find? Absolutely. And none of the, none of us run to those conversations to go, excellent, <laughs> let's just hear all of my faults. We, well, I don't. <laughs> um, like uh, I've heard Bill share that sort of stuff too and how willing he is to engage with the conversation. And it shows to me a guy who doesn't have anything to hide. Mm. So like we're not going to agree with everyone on the planet. And <laughs> like I think with any two humans, if you thought exactly the same as each other, well, I just don't know that's the way we've been created. I, yeah. I think we're different for a reason. I think we're different to draw out the good in each other and mm. to see the good in each other. Just so often in our culture, particularly in Australian culture, we'll often look for the bad before we look for the good. Mm. We'll criticise before we love. And I often think at times that people would rather control a person rather than love a person oh. because they think that loving is too too hard it's not loving is what we're designed to do yeah that's how we're designed so it should be as natural as breathing to us but our world is teaching us to fear these concepts of love mm. um, because we don't like being vulnerable, vulnerable with people and vulnerability and relationship and love uh, intimacy all these beautiful words that uh, have been seeded into us through the bible and through our own lives mm. often we're scared of them and often we change the meanings to them and we lose the richness of what God is actually bringing to us in, in relationship. If we could hold on to the meanings of these words and see them actually come to life, we would see his design at work in every single one of the people that come into our, into our orbit. See, again, I just think love is our design. Yeah. And I think that every time we choose to fear, we're actually messing with our design. Mm. Um, I think fear is often something we should listen to as a feeling as to go, okay, is this legit? Should we be listening to this concept? And if it's true, absolutely. But if it's something that's uh, trying to control us or to change the course of our lives, I think we're operating on under another design. And so I, like, I'm, I'm all up for the conversation of living out a life that's designed by love. Oh. Oh, yes. So um, what are some, because I can imagine, you know, you are a pastor and you've got, um, and, I, and you pastor so well, like you really care and you love and you hold these safe places for people. Um, how does that, is there a time, are there times that you'll, that you go, oh, I think I might be coming into striving? <laughs> Yeah, it's such an interesting question. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> if, if I didn't laugh, I'd probably cry. Mm -hmm. um, but most of my life leading up to that moment was all striving. Mm -hmm. It was all trying to make everybody else think that everything is going great. Mm -hmm. And so if church is full, if the church is mm -hmm. doing the things that people expect churches to be doing, um, it, it's all those sorts of things and we have the wrong goals in mind. Um, see, all those years ago when we had this breakdown, the word rest became a, um, it was a go-to word for Trish and I, but rest, 
is not for me just doing nothing. You know, in the Bible where it says God rested, I often say to people, hey, what do you think it means that mm. God rested? And you see people just go, oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that means. Did he do nothing? Did he, I don't know. <laughs> Did he go fishing? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But again, so I love to go back to understanding what the word means. And mm. if you go back into the Hebrew language, you see that the word rest has a lot to do with home. And so what did God do when he rested? In my interpretation, he made himself at home. Mm. How did he do that? He walked in the cool of the evening with those that he was in relationship with. Mm. I don't know if you've ever gone for a walk in the cool of the evening with your man, uh, Lisa, mm. but you know that's a place of rest. Yeah. That's a place of relationship. And for me, this, was, this started changing everything that I do. It, it recreated a place for my marriage. It recreated a place for my family. And then it recreated a place for my ministry mm. uh, and the things that I do on the planet. And so striving is something that I can still feel it in my spirit at times. Like in the last 12 months or 18 months with COVID and yeah. trying to run a church for this. Yeah. it's I've worked more in the last 18 months than probably I've done in the last five years. Maybe not. I don't know. But it's been very busy. Sure, I bet. Um, and so it's very tempting to keep being busy. Yeah. But for me, as you can tell, I'm, even in probably my tone, the word busy for me is not a helpful word. Mm -hmm. um, my life is full. There is, it's true. And there's areas of it that does at times go into busyness. But the rhythm of my life is something that I live my life by. Mm -hmm. And rhythm for me is one of my go-to words in life. Where is my rhythm? Mm -hmm. Am I out of rhythm? Am I in rhythm? In my marriage to Trish, am I out of rhythm? Am I in rhythm? Yeah. And, and you know as well as I do, you can feel when it's clunky. And you, you can. can feel when it's brilliant. And if you're confused about which is which, it's probably clunky and you need to get and do some walks <laughs> in the middle of the evening. And inside of that word rhythm, though, uh, is so much of how I live. Um, and so like even when I'm at the beach, the mm. rhythm of the waves, uh, even if I'm standing on top of a mountain, the rhythm of what I'm feeling in creation that's flowing around me, uh, I love for it. Even when I'm doing talks like this, the rhythm that flows between us, you can feel it and it's yeah. something that's tangible of what the Father's doing. And I think rhythms are, are a part of our design. Mm -hmm. And so for me, Lisa, it's just this place of... Um, at times I need to step back to go, okay, where's the rhythm gone? And why does it feel clunky right now? And then, Father, what is it that I can be doing to get back into those places? God, what can I do? Um, and again, it's not then about striving. It's always about resting. Yeah. And do you find, because I find this, um, rhythm can, when it feels clunky, it can be just all about perspective. So it's not what you're doing, it's how you're doing it or, or the, yeah, just your perspective. Have you found that? Well, sometimes for me, Lisa, it's it's the perspective even on my identity as well. Because mm -hmm. often, um, like as a pastor, it's sometimes you feel like you're a jack of all trades and you've got to be ev everything for all people. And it's it's a very difficult position to sit in like that. And sometimes it comes back to my own identity. Who am I? Yeah. I think there's a thousand things that are really great to do, but I think there's a few things that we're designed to do. Mm -hmm. And helping people find those few things that we are designed to do that was my revelation first. And so what is it I'm here to do? I'm here to show people the love of, of God. Mm -hmm. That's I feel that it's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help people to understand how they have been created, to see their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Because your uniqueness is different to my uniqueness, but yeah. when the two of us work together, we have a double portion of what that could actually look like because we can do something together. If you add then our, my wife, your husband, into the conversation, we have a fourfold expression of our uniqueness. And so for me at times, it's just stepping back to go, okay, is this who I am? And again, I think self-awareness at times in our culture is really poor. Mm. I think projection is very strong in our, our, our culture where we look to see what, well, what's Lisa doing? Let's just do what Lisa's doing. And if mm. Lisa's succeeding, then I should, do, I should succeed too. Or if Bill Johnson is succeeding, then I do what he's doing. And God's like, no, no that's, <laughs> I created Lisa to be Lisa and Bill to be Bill. Please be Matt. Yes. That sort of stuff, Lisa, it just, I find it really helpful in stepping back in those moments and mm. go, is this who I am? That is 
pure gold, Matt. And you do that so well. I see, I, I watch the way that you pastor because I have started attending church on the couch, um, which is this amazing online church that Matt pastors. And just the space that you hold for people and the value that you place on each person who shares and you actually draw out the gold in what they say. You look for it and you find it and it is so incredible and beautiful to watch. And it's really obvious that it's come from a place of refining and um, that there's a big story behind there that you've, you've journeyed with God. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Thank you for saying that, Lisa. It's it's a real it's a joy and an honour for a person to share what's inside of their heart. Mm. It's, see, one of my keys of life is to listen to people, mm. and when I listen, I just don't want to hear the words. I want to see the heart. Mm. And one of the joys of being in relationship with people in this particular way that we're doing it is that people are being vulnerable enough to show a part of their heart. Yeah. Um, I know in relationship, when, when you first meet a person, they'll show you a little bit. Yeah. And they're wanting to know whether you're going to honour that. And so if they forget your name or they forget something key that you've just offered them, you go, okay, fine, no, this is not for me. But if they pick up not only on your name and, and the piece that you've offered, but they then see the goodness there's something about it when someone speaks to your identity. Mm, it's is. extraordinary. And like when I first met you, Lisa, um, if you don't mind me speaking to your identity in this <laughs> conversation, but when I first um, met you, uh, I met you through a friend who spoke to me about you. And so I had an inkling of the person that I was about to meet, but the one that I discovered and the richness of the heart that you offer up and the vulnerability you sit step out in, in Lisa, I love it. I love it because again, it's just like you, you're just saying, God, it's all the it, it's either you and I or it's nothing. Mm. And the the willingness that you have to step into those places, and then the way that you hold people in those places, uh, that for me uh, just shows such a compassion. It shows such an empathy. It shows such a willingness. And you are a leader. When I listen to the way that you, you're doing retreats and the way that you wait for God to speak, I'm thinking, man, this, this woman's a pioneer. <laughs> and in the pioneering leadership, what she is doing is creating a place for so many people to discover who they are through the Father's eyes and through the Father's lens. And I just, I don't know, I just really enjoyed listening to what you carry. And I just seeing, seeing you do that is just, oh, I don't know, it's special. Oh, Matt, thank you. <laughs> That's um, hit my heart deeply. And again, this is what I see in you. I just love the way you call out golden people. And it really impacts. That's something that will impact each heart that you speak into. And um, so, Matt, how can people find out a bit more about you and even this amazing business that you're beginning? Yeah, so it's something that Trish and I have been sitting in for the longest while of going, okay, what, Father, what do you want us to do and, and how do you want us to, to be and, and all that sort of stuff. So we, a couple of years ago, we decided that we're going to call this business Greater Things and um, it taps into Jesus saying, hey, there are greater things that are mm -hmm. still ahead of us and that we're going to do greater things than even, even he and so we decided to start that before COVID <laughs> and then oh, wow. COVID hit and I was completely consumed with what everything was happening with the church. But now we're in a season of restarting. And uh, so what we're doing and right now is we're running a pioneering course in um, helping people discover their identity, their authority. And so they can step out into these places. And often we're finding that people all over the planet are asking questions about what could be mm. uh, in, in the concept of what could be is what um, we want to be in a place of mentoring, encouraging, and empowering people to live out that life in all of its fullness. Oh, that's fantastic. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the best way to find out a bit more about your, yep. what you're offering? Yep. So we, we're on both Facebook and Instagram, but on our web, it's greaterthingsinternational.com greaterthingsinternational.com yeah, I would it. 
I thoroughly recommend everyone to go and check that out. <laughs> and Matt, the gold that has come from you today, I so appreciate your time. I love the way you've shared authentically and vulnerably and just about the importance of having those um, honest conversations, but with love and how that's life changing. So bless you, Matt. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lisa. And bless you as well for all you're doing. It's just great to see and listen to what the father's doing and in and through you as well. It's awesome. Thanks for joining me on Brave with Lisa. I hope that it has inspired or impacted you in a small or large way. Feel free to comment, to subscribe and share with some friends. And please join us next week on another conversation we will have here on this channel on Brave with Lisa.